637 News Talk to WLOB. I'm Ray Richardson. Good morning. State Representative Amy Volk is here. Thanks for staying with me. Yeah, my pleasure. So, Paul Ryan, do you follow him at all nationally? I do, yeah. There is talk on the weekend that he is uh, a likely vice presidential nominee. He has said he would certainly consider it if asked. Mm. What do you think of that? Yeah, I, th I'm, I would be for him. I, I like Rubio better because I think he would attract a lot of the Hispanic vote. Yeah. But he said he wouldn't do it, so I don't know. I don't know. I think the uh, I think the allure, I mean, Rubio is, is not even 40 yet, is he? He's no. a very young man. He's impressive. Yes. I, uh, did you see him when he was in Portland? Um, I did not. I didn't go. But I knew yeah. him back when he was, uh, he'd been a guest on the show several times, when he was Speaker of the House in oh, the really? state of Florida. Oh, wow. Um, some issues that were going on down there uh, back when we were fighting the Jessica's Law battle here in the state yeah. to try to put uh, people who were convicted of sexual molestation of children under the age of 12 mm -hmm. behind bars for a mandatory period of at least 25 years. Uh, we had Rubio on several times talking about that because that happened under his speakership. He's so. a sharp guy. He is. I like him a lot, and, I, you know, I think there are some big things for him. My dream ticket would have been Christy Rubio. That would have been my dream ticket. Just because they're both plain-spoken men. Yeah, Christy's a lot more liberal than Rubio, though. Yeah, um, I, I think on some issues he may be, but what I like about Christy is, is that uh, he is up for the fight. Yeah. He is up for the fight. Yeah, I agree. And he just... You know, he doesn't worry about it. And yeah. if you don't like him or you don't reelect him, he's kind of like Paul LePage, the governor of the Yeah, I, I agree. They, they sort of remind me of each other. Yeah, very plain spoken <laughs> men. Let's go back uh, very quickly to this uh, camper's tax. Yeah, my camper tax. And just explain, if you would, um, where we left off was main revenue. Uh, the, the bill is before the appropriations committee. It's passed the House, passed the Senate. Yeah. There's a fiscal note of $100,000, which uh, always makes appropriations nervous. Yeah, it's actually about $130,000. 130, $130,000. In the first year, and, so then, that, and so then, that, then it decreases from there. So that makes, you know, the Appropriations Committee even more nervous. I don't know why, but it Yeah, does. well, they ha because we are bound to, to balance the budget, and so um, they, ha they have to take it into account. We can't change fiscal notes. We can't show um, the dynamic effect that fiscal note um, may have have in play and um, which this one does um, the fiscal note is based upon um, what MRS says is known activity and um, All right, they so were me, not let's, able let's to stop there for a moment <laughs> if main revenue service says it's based on known activity but they're not going to apply the law then how is that a, a revenue loss? Well, I think going forward, they intend to apply the law. So going forward, if you are Joe Schmo RV Rentals in the state of Maine, um, they are going to expect you, if you are holding back a couple of your RVs, even though you're a dealer, for rental purposes, they're going to expect you to pay a, a sales tax on that. Um, they are also going to expect out-of-state companies um, like Chad Shepard in Vermont um, to, to if they are doing business in Maine, to pay that use tax. So I think that this is just a law. They looked back. You know, they're constantly combing through to figure out how can we raise more how revenue for the state. How can we extract state. more from the hardworking people of Maine? And, and, and I don't want to throw them under the bus because they actually are in favor of my law. Um, they feel that because what it would do is change it to taxing the revenue, um, the rental stream. And so going forward, just like we do on rental cars or leased cars, um, there would be a tax paid on that lease. Unfortunately, um, there's this short-term cost, in my opinion, and in the opinion of everybody else, it's actually going to be a generator uh, of Augusta the is state. nothing but short-term thinking, so that's why you're in a fight. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. Regardless yeah. of political party, whether it's Republicans or Democrats, right. it is the moment that we always worry about instead of the right. long term. So, essentially, what's going to happen, if your bill is, is okay by the Appropriations Committee and signed into law by the governor, um, instead of going and doing what, they're, what Maine Revenue is currently proposing, which is to put a sales tax or a use tax mm -hmm. Um, on what is the value of the thing. If I go in and lease from Bailey's a, a camper for $1,000, they're going to charge me a 5% tax like you would when you lease well, the, on the $1,000. Not exactly. See, that's where this gets really, really complicated. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
if you are, if you were, because Bailey's is a campground, not a dealer. If you went and you and you spent a thousand dollars for a week on one of their campers, you're already paying a seven percent lodging tax. That because that's that's stationary. It's like renting a hotel room. What if I'm in a tent? Do I pay a seven percent lodging tax in a tent? Uh, you do pay. I believe they. Sh I'll, that's inconsistent. Some campgrounds charge you seven percent on the on the the the. The spot and others don't. Ladies and gentlemen, now you know why we're in the mess yes, we're in. I know. This is crazy. <laughs> All right, so but, in other words, Bailey's would be the one leasing the camper, so Bailey's will pay. Correct. Oh, see, we yes. get it. So, so if little... they're paying ten grand for the season to rent from Chad Shepard in in Vermont, they would be pay, they would they're pay, they're going to now be paying an additional five hundred dollars that will go to the state. So they'll pay a 5% lease tax, right. which is what you would pay on an automobile. Right. Although I think the automobile is 10%, right? Right. And and conversely, if, if you guys, the Richardson family decided you wanted to rent an RV and drive up the coast, um, and so you went to one of our local RV dealers, then you would pay a 5, you know, if you if you were, save $1,000, right. you would pay 5% um, on that. So yeah, that's, I mean, that's fairly... Normal, right? And that would same, be what you a would expect. Normal that. state would do, right? You would expect that. It's Ooh, a much more efficient. Casual. Yes, it's a much more efficient. It's it's going to spread it out a little bit more, right? So, and and main revenue service is fully in favor of support of that bill. sort of of lease of um, taxing. So you have house support, you have senate support, yeah. you have main revenue support. Right. What you need is appropriation support. Appropriations needs to fund it. And this would be very, I mean, this would make it much more clear for everyone and also be what we would consider to be business as usual, which is what other states do. Right. Instead of trying to, well, I'm glad you, uh, we, <laughs> we, we did this about a month ago. I think is when this first really hit the wires, and we did this about a month ago and talked about it. I'm glad you're in here to explain it now because, um, you know, it, this is what, what drives people crazy in this yeah, state. I know. It, it just... The inconsistency and and the the culture of the moment thinking that goes on and has gone on in Augusta for we don't even know how long. So yeah. and that gotcha taxation. Yeah. You know, I mean, like this poor guy. And and, and just to be clear, um, in order to keep the fiscal note down to one hundred and thirty thousand dollars, which is pretty substantial already, this is not retroactive. So the guy in Vermont still has an ongoing audit going back six years. And he may owe the state as much as three hundred thousand dollars, and he he could go out of business because you know, unfortunately, my interests are for the people in the state, the businesses right. in this state. As much as I would have liked to help him out in order to keep the fiscal note lower, um, I you know I, I couldn't make it retroactive. So, have they been applying this tax all along to people? Uh, well, I think it's sort of like the, the, the use tax, where if you go down to New Hampshire and you purchase some things, you're supposed to report to the state. I think that, you know, they were expecting that people were doing that, which obviously no one does. And it's a good so, thing I never leave Westbrook, therefore I can never <laughs> have to worry about the use tax. That's why, see, that's why I stay in the cocoon. It's a little because bit safer. If, if you move outside of the cocoon, the friendly confines of Westbrook, somebody's going to come get you. Yeah, well... We'd be nice to you in Scarborough if you ever want to come to yeah, the beach yeah, or something. Yeah, that's what I hear. Go I to Bay well, when you come to Bailey's. That's, that's true, a couple that's times a year. Yeah, I do venture out, but usually <laughs> it's out of the cloak of darkness. <laughs> right. State Representative Amy Volk, it's always good to see you. I hope you'll be back soon. Thank you. I'd love to be. It is 746 from News Talk, WLOB. About 2,000.